It's generally accepted wisdom that the unluckiest character in a Soulsborne game is you on account of all the this sort of thing. I mean, you wouldn't call that good luck, would you? But there is in fact a category of even unluckier characters in the Soulsborne series, by which we of course mean the Demons and Dark Souls' Bloodborne, Sekiro and Elden Ring. Namely, enemies who have the immense misfortune to drop a disproportionately high amount of XP for how simple they are to kill, and who happen to live so close to a respawn point that they get ruthlessly farmed by players looking to level up fast i.e. all of them. Pity these unfortunate souls that got farmed relentlessly and who, as a result, died even more times than I did. Which is saying something. Pity the slime scholars. Off to university, trying to better themselves, perhaps build a better life than their slime parents. And what's their reward? Did you guess killed with an axe? If so, congrats, you probably played Bloodborne before. These globular students are found, fittingly, in a part of Bloodborne called the Lecture Building, where they're sat learning. They wear mortarboards and academic cloaks, although their bodies have been morphed into a slimy pulp due to their excessive comprehension of the mind-shattering Great Ones. Typical Freshers Week stuff. Considering they are made of fairly non-threatening pale goo, it's no surprise to learn that an enterprising Bloodborne player can slay every single scholar in this lecture hall inside of a minute. What is surprising is how many Blood Echoes, the currency vital for levelling up and buying healing items, each scholar drops when killed. Which is unlucky for them, and terribly unlucky, when you consider the room in which they're studying is a brisk jog back to a lantern, which after a bit of fast travel jiggery-pokery respawns the lot of them, creating a near-perfect farming opportunity. So long as you don't mind mugging roomfuls of quiet, gooey scholars over and over for their surprising amounts of blood echoes. They're only going to spend it on vodka Red Bull anyway. Don't fear the reaper, Blue Oyster Cult famously sang, which is how you know Blue Oyster Cult are big fans of demon souls. You'd be forgiven for thinking, however, that there's good reason to fear the reaper in demon souls, because he's a particularly nasty enemy, capable of beaming out magic bolts like nobody's business if you get in close, which you probably won't because he also spawns in countless shadow lurker enemies to fill the room, who'll swarm you if you're not very careful. Shadow Lurkers, like these ones found near the start of the Ritual Path section of the game, don't even have the decency to pay out many souls when you slay them, and the only way to put a stop to their capers is to kill the Reaper who summoned them, which kills them all at once, netting you the Reaper's souls plus the souls of, ooh, every Shadow Lurker in the room! ch ching Cha-ching! Bad luck, Death! You were once a powerful and feared symbol of life's impermanence until we discovered that sprinting past all your minions and killing you straight away was an extremely quick and easy way to farm XP! Hey, if you've got a bow, you don't even have to enter the Reaper's domain to farm for currency. Death, maybe time to replace those rags with something a little more arrow-resistant? It's 2023, Death. It's time to get a mech suit. Don't give him ideas! When Elden Ring came out, oh, what a great time. Everybody playing, learning, dying, discovering, all together. It was a wonderful moment. Unless you were one of these frogmen. 
because it wasn't long before players discovered these peaceful, mostly non-aggressive creatures, known as Albinorix, could be found in their droves at a late game location that you could sneakily access just a few hours into the game, if you knew where to look, or how to google the words Elden Ring Best Rune Farm. We all googled it. No shame in it. Okay, some shame in it. I'm so ashamed! Each Albinoric in this spot, conveniently located right by a site of grace, dropped a considerable number of runes considering how hard they were to kill, which bearing in mind they're mostly sat around looking sad, is not very. And so for a while it seemed these stabbable Albinorics were the unluckiest enemy in Elden Ring. Until that is, an even better method was found, one that could only emerge from the collective ingenuity of a community absolutely determined not to level up the proper way. Because look over to your left in this infamous farming spot and you'll spy a huge bird in the distance, technically known as a blistered crow. Now you might think a creature known as a blistered crow has suffered enough, and it's certainly upset. Consider, for instance, that should you snipe it from this enormous distance, it will sprint in your direction as the crow flies, which, turns out, it doesn't. When it sprints pell-mell to its own death, this poor furious crow transfers you 11,000 runes, a figure that can be boosted to over 17,000 with items and consumables, and because it's visible right from the site of grace, can be profitably murdered at a jaw-dropping rate of once every 20 seconds. There's simply no better farming technique in the game, until you beat the very final boss, at which point you can trade in its soul for the sacred relic sword, and oh ho, looks like Albinorix back on the menu, boys! Still, good news for the crow. many places in Dark Souls you'd feel lucky to live. Sorry, just thinking about some of the places. <laughs> but if you, a Dark Souls enemy, got placed in the painted world of Ariamis, you'd perhaps think yourself pretty fortunate. There's fresh air, it's eerily beautiful, and while it may be cold and snowy here, you've had the extra good fortune to be placed right next to a lovely warm bonfire. Yeah, I think I think we all know where this is going. What a reversal of fortune it is for the Phalanx, an enemy made up of 13 individual creatures, each of whom drops a hearty 500 souls when killed, despite being little more than a gooey blob holding a spear and a shield. And as Bloodborne has already illustrated, it's actually not good to have a body made of goo probably didn't need Bloodborne to teach us that. Given its bonfire proximity, rich soul yield of just under 10k souls per minute with the right equipment, and easiness to smash flat, the poor phalanx has probably been relentlessly farmed more than any other enemy in all of Dark Souls. And as such, we award it the prize for the unluckiest enemy in the whole game. Alas, poor phalanx. Your piteous form and- Ow! Wait! Hang on! Crap! Okay, well, that makes the score one million to one. Many of the enemies on this list are, how to put this tactfully, scrub trash. But Dark Souls 2's unluckiest enemy has the added indignity of being not a squishy frogman or murderable academic, but an honest to goodness boss. The shame of it. The boss is the giant lord, who probably thought he'd have it made, seeing as lordly life must be pretty sweet in the medieval world of Dark Souls, and giant into the bargain? Well, that's just a bonus. The Giant Lord is, however, the unluckiest character in the game, thanks to the whopping number of souls he drops when killed and a mechanic exclusive to Dark Souls 2. 
This is the Bonfire Ascetic, a consumable you can burn at a bonfire to increase the difficulty of an area, turning it from New Game to New Game Plus, then New Game Plus 2, and so on. It also respawns items and every currently dead boss. Perhaps you can see where this is going. Sadly for the Giant Lord, he resides in the Memory of Jay, a very small area about 10 seconds walk from a bonfire that comprises a castle in the midst of a furious fiery battle. It's full of enemies, but they're all busy killing each other, so all you need to do is pick your way through to the Giant Lord himself, then use whatever method you deem appropriate to smash seven bells out of his bony bum. Killing the Giant Lord earns you a huge number of souls, which you can of course boost by wearing XP enhancing clothes and rings, and it's just 10 seconds back to the bonfire to burn a bonfire ascetic, guaranteeing the Lord drops even more souls next time you fight him. A process you can repeat to the tune of around 10 million souls per hour. The true beauty of this farming spot is that the memory of Jay even contains a bonfire ascetic a generally pretty rare item that respawns when you use it at the bonfire, so you can slaughter the Lord infinitely without ever running out of them. Hey, Giant Lord, maybe, I don't know, put a hat over that or something? Put it up on a high shelf? I imagine you have shelves that only you can reach. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is not a game about fair fights, unless you think it's fair that alongside everything else in this game you can also be killed by a giant koi carp. Because I don't think that's fair. No, Sekiro is a game about mercilessly dispatching enemies however you can, using every devious shinobi tool at your disposal. But even we think it's a bit unfair how savagely several enemies in this game get rinsed for the precious money or skill point XP they might possess. One could point to this poor chump in the Gunfort area, for instance, who has the twin misfortunes of paying out a surprising 300 XP or so when he dies, and having a spine that faces cheerfully towards a respawn point about 10 feet away. I don't know why he always sounds so surprised. For our money though, no farming target feels more unjust than the Interior Ministry Ninja, located right next to the Mibu Village Sculptor's Idol. These tough enemies can be found in a few spots through the game and put up a serious fight whenever you find them, for instance by turning into a tornado of poison and steel and unblockable attacks. Your reward for besting the ninja is a very respectable 784 XP, a payout that gets considerably more respectable when you realise that so long as you drop into a crouch and hug this wall, you can fit your sword right down his spinal column with no need to fight at all. Then needless to say, jump back to the idol and repeat until you have all the sweet skill points you could wish. The fact that Ninja begins to notice you approaching in this manner, but never goes fully on alert, makes us think this farming spot might be an accident of the game's geometry that we are relentlessly taking advantage of. Or maybe he's just got his hood on a bit tight. Peripheral vision, mate. That's Ninja 101. If there's one thing we've learned from this list, it's that, say it with me, We're monsters? Oh. I was going to say it's really annoying having to run back to the bonfire every time to reload the enemies. Oh. You're a monster. There must be a better way. Well, in Dark Souls 3, there actually is. Right round the corner from a bonfire in Arch Dragon Peak, you'll find a Manserpent Summoner, a weedy enemy whose main attack is a text alert chime. <laughs> to be fair, often terrifying. What the summoner's actually doing is, fittingly, summoning, specifically a powerful Drake Blood Knight to fight alongside it. 
Happily though, this Drake Blood Knight, let's call him Jerry, always gets summoned in the exact same spot, which means... Hello, Jerry. Good to see you again. Bye, Jerry. Always good to see you. Oh, hey, who's this? Oh, it's Jerry. Hello, Jerry. Oh, <laughs> that's classic Jerry. Getting violently killed by me. You can, of course, ruthlessly exploit this repeated spawning in the same spot to kill Jerry pretty easily. And every time Jerry's extremely brief existence is snuffed out, he leaves you with a parting gift of 4,000 souls, which of course can be boosted with the usual trinkets and accessories, and absolutely no need to make a tedious run back to a bonfire, for what is perhaps the laziest, albeit most macabre, farming method on this list. Seriously, pop a podcast on. Jerry doesn't mind. You don't mind, do you, Jerry? Jerry doesn't mind. I mean, you could almost feel guilty, but I sort of don't think of all those prints. So many XP, so don't many souls, at me. blood egg. Mm -hmm. We all know. No, we I did it. I did the whole, all the games at level one. Uh huh. Uh huh. Like a real gamer. <laughs> Can you think of any particular enemies in the Souls series uh, that just you farmed relentlessly and these poor things, you just killed them over and over and over again? Um, let us know, share your wonderful memories in these fabulous games. Uh, and if you enjoyed this video, please do give us a thumbs up. Uh, we've got more Soulsy related lists here for you to enjoy. If you'd like to support us even further than liking and subscribing, we also have a Patreon and we do, I believe we have a, there's an Elden Ring uh, bit in the Discord, oh, yeah. definitely. So yeah. Uh, yeah, chat to Luke especially um, about wonderful uh, souls born -y things in there. Uh, but in the meantime, take care of yourself, especially if you are one of these enemies. We're really sorry.